This time of year is migration. Some people think that's bird migration, but believe it or not, it's also insect migration. My good friend Dirk Morgan is here. Some people call him Mr. Monarch. Some people call him <laughs> Mr. Milkweed. But he's really famous for Morgan Canoe Livery and Morgan Outdoor Adventures. And we've had adventures together, but you do more with monarchs than anybody I know. Now, they live around us. There's milkweed around us, but not like out at your farm. I've seen acres of milkweed. Well, we've done a lot of planting there yeah, and cultivated phenomenal. over the last 10 years some beautiful you know, pollinator gardens. Mm -hmm. I believe that the Little Miami River has the potential to be the longest yep. pollinator pathway in the United States with, with the pristine valley that we have. And uh, yeah, so, you know, plant milkweed. That's the only thing that, uh -huh. that will actually, uh, the monarchs will eat the caterpillars in order to become a butterfly. Uh, it, it actually gives them immunity from a lot of insects and, and animals that would eat them. It makes them toxic. Yeah, I, ironically, monarchs are one of those beautiful butterflies, but they are distasteful because because they've been eating that and keeps birds from eating them, I guess. That's correct. And, and you know, you, well, you know, you mentioned planting for pollinators and uh, at our house, my wife's really gotten into that, but just over the past couple of years, and it is amazing to me, you can stick a milkweed plant in and literally two days later you look out and there's eggs under the leaves and then there's little caterpillars and then they get to be big ones. So if folks want to do something like that, it helps wildlife, but it is incredibly rewarding. If you've ever had a bird feeder, that's fun. That's, that's right. not a down payment on having these plants because <laughs> birds and insects are literally all over them. You know, uh, what I want people to understand is you don't have to work at the zoo uh, or have any mm -hmm. connection to have a a, a garden in your backyard, register it with the zoo's pollination yeah, yeah. and register it with Monarch Watch. Let me hold this and, and you can show what what's inside well, that Well, and it really doesn't take any bigger area than your garden that you already have. If you plant two types of milkweed, say a common milkweed like this one or a swamp milkweed, yeah. um, these will naturally fly oh, off that. on their own, but you can harvest the seeds. You hold the end of it and you can see right there, I've already oh got a hundred seeds in my hand. Got a, and got this is this is all the fluff. There. Now it's very sticky, so you're going to get it all over you. But um, you would want to have these cold stratified and plant them in the fall, just like Mother Nature does. So um, it doesn't take a big garden to do that. It just takes a, a few seeds. And you can find these pods in farmers' fields naturally. Of course, don't walk on somebody's property, ask them permission and when they're ripe they'll just fly away on their own and um, so give us a sense of the timing Dirk where you you've, you've noticed some eggs and then teeny caterpillars but eventually big robust ones until they emerge and fly away right um, we start seeing the eggs arrive here in Ohio generally late June early July mm -hmm. and but that's not the migratory uh, butterfly right. that will actually fly to Mexico from Cincinnati to the highland mountains of Mexico, they have about a 2,200 mile journey. And there's a special generation, and the wingspan's 30% larger, huh. um, and they, over winter, they live about five to six times longer yeah. than the other yeah. three generations. And uh, then in September, we start to uh, release the ones that will be migrating, mm -hmm. and we actually tag those so that Monarch Watch can do further yeah. study where they came from, when they were released, so they yeah. can basically tell how long it took to get there. And, and it's important work. You know, monarchs are beloved, but they also are very threatened. Their numbers are down almost everywhere. The secret is to not find more monarchs. The secret is to plant more pollinating plants. Um, now, the adults can eat from flowers, but it is essential that the young to lay their eggs and to feed those caterpillars have milkweed. So people say to me all the time, I'm sure they do to you, what can I do to help wildlife? Well, one is you can plant for pollinators and plant for monarchs. It's very easy, and in my yard, which is not a big yard, we have common milkweed and swamp milkweed, and literally have caterpillars all over them. So you don't just have to be out on a big farm, you can do it anywhere you live. The zoo has um, native pollinators also for sale. We sell those out at our Boyer Farm in Warren County. Look on our website, you can find out how to get those. So if you don't know how to find the plants you need, we can certainly get you some. And think about, about using less chemicals, yep. pesticides and herbicides yep. in your garden. Uh, we don't need those. The monarchs uh, don't need them, and uh, and and really try to plant more of a natural garden, uh, not not putting down chemlon services. No, but, no, I hear you. Uh, yeah, uh, more natural yards mean more pollinators, and we've really lost a lot of habitat 
for the monarchs. That's their biggest issue. So plant milkweed. You bet. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Get involved. Plant some pollinators. Get some milkweed. We want to thank Simple Truth and Kroger. They've sponsored our pollinator program for years. They're good partners. And I always want to thank my friend Dirk. I can't wait till our next adventure. I guess we're doing the duathlon coming up. We got a duathlon yep. coming. We got we to gotta start practicing. We better now. get in shape. We're the oldest team in it. <laughs> <laughs> the most experienced. That's right.